Hello and welcome back to another tutorial on this channel. In this video you will learn how to create a complete day and night circle. So let's don't waste any time and get right into it. To start off you just need the shader, uh, which I linked in the video description, and four skyboxes for each time. We start by handling the time, therefore we just create an empty game object and call it time manager. And we add a script to it, also called time manager. So we got a fresh script here called time manager. What do we need? We want to keep track of time, so we want to keep track of the minutes, the hours and the days. So for that we just create three variables. Of course you can also introduce a new variable called seconds, but I like this style. So we want to make sure that one second in real life is a minute in game time. Therefore we um, create the update method. And within the update method we want to keep track of the seconds. So we may need another variable. I just call it temp seconds. We add the delta time to the temp seconds. And if the temp second is one or more, we want to add a minute to our minute variable. Good. But now we want to have a event which handles each minute change or hour change or day change. Therefore, we introduce a property which relies on the minute or hour or days variable and call it when it's changing. Nice. So as I said, I want to handle each minute or hour or day change. So I introduce a new function called on minute change. And I pass in the current minute value. For this tutorial it's okay to just have on minute changed and on hours changed. We do not need the on days changed. Okay, fine. Now the on minutes change will also handle the track of hours. As you see, we just get a track of the current minutes. So if the current value of minutes is 60 or above that, we just add an hour. And we may want to reset the minutes. But if the hours are bigger than or equal 24, we want to reset the hours and add days. We also could handle this on the on hours change, but I liked it up, but I like it on the on minutes change to have everything together. Now comes the fun part where we decide on which o'clock we want to have which skybox. I would say that at 6 a.m. I want to have morning skybox, at 8 a.m. a day skybox, at 6 p.m. a evening skybox, and at 10 p.m. a night skybox. So let's do that. We want a smooth transition between the skyboxes. So we also could just say, okay, if it's 6 a.m., we set the skybox to a morning skybox or something like that, but we do not want this. We want to have a smooth transition between each skybox. Therefore, we create an I enumerator called lerp skybox, where we have the skybox lerping the textures. So let's not waste any time and let's go. Let's have a look at the shader we imported. We create a material from the shader by right-clicking on the shader, create material. I call it skybox. You see we have two textures, texture 1 and texture 2. Texture 1 is the current skybox texture and texture 2 is the next skybox texture. We want to make sure that the current texture aligns with the current time. We are starting with 12 o'clock. I drag and drop the night skybox to the texture 1 and the sunrise texture to texture 2. We also make sure that the blend slider is set to 0. This is important because we do not want to start at 0 0.5 or at 1. Because this is the magic slider which is reliable for the whole magic. So make sure this is set to 0. So as I just said, we want to make sure that the current texture is set to texture 1 and the next texture is set to texture B. So we open the render settings and set the texture to the corresponding one. Also we do not want to forget to set the blend to zero. So while the duration is not over we want to loop through the skybox and want to adjust the blend variable. 
as this is a I enumerator, we want to yield return null while it's not finished. At the end, I want to make sure that the correct texture is set. So I set the next texture to the current texture. So now we can set up the lerp skybox function. But we need to import the skybox textures first. So let's move up. So therefore we start with a coroutine, lerp skybox, and as texture one, as I said, we want to have the night skybox transition to the sunrise skybox. This should happen for presentation purposes, just 10 seconds. So now we just adjust the values so it fits. So we want to have sunrise today, Day to sunset and sunset to night again. We don't want to forget to drag and drop the textures to the variables. And also we do not want to forget to add the skybox material to the real skybox. So we go to, go to the lightning tab, to the environment tab and drag and drop the skybox material to the default skybox. Nice. And let's have a look Oh, it's working. Super nice, the skybox is working, but as you notice, the ground doesn't is affected by the light change. So we tackle that. Therefore, we want to import the light. Super simple, we just have a serialized field which uh, yeah, is called global light. It is the main directional light we have in this scene. So we just create another I enumerator called lerp light. There we want to add as a parameter a gradient, which called light gradient. What it is and why do we need this, I explain it later. So we could just copy the for loop from the lerp skybox. And now we just want to adjust the colors of the global light. So global light dot color is the light gradient dot evaluate the current value of the time. So what is this light gradient? Why do we need the light gradient? Because we want to have a gradient which has a smooth transition from one light to another light. So for this smooth transition of color, we just add four gradients. So we have our four gradients called night to sunrise, sunrise to day, day to sunset and sunset to night. Now you need to experiment which color you might love the most. I just experiment around with this and uh, we see this later when I got some. So this looks good. Now I just drag and drop the directional light into our global light and make sure to call the function. So I just create a new coroutine and call it derp light. This looks fine, I guess, but we, but we might need to adjust the color of the global light to the start of the gradient to make it really work in. And also, if you activated the fog, we also want to use this color. So for example, you have a density of 005, we also want to make this work with this color. Also, we want to have the start color set right to that color we have at the start of our gradient and we want to make sure that we access the fog color within our function. We just add one little line called render settings dot fog color is equal to global light dot color. So let's have a look what it looks like. Yeah, it fades nicely into the scene. Okay, last but not least, I want to take care of the shadows. I want to rotate the shadows with the time of day. And for that, we easily have just one line of code 
uh, which we enter on the on minutes change function called global light dot transform dot rotate and now we want to see okay uh, which vector is the up vector of course in our 3d space is the vector 3 dot up now the amount we want to change so we just have one divided by 1440 this is because the day has 1440 minutes then we want to multiply it by 360 degrees obviously this should be calculated in the world space and that's it so now we just have a look what our final result looks like